Good morning, church. I'm very excited this morning to welcome you in the name of Christ Jesus. Um, Marty is preaching this morning. Originally, I was scheduled to be on a women's retreat, and that got rescheduled. So I just get to be co-host today, and I find that very exciting. Um, So good morning. Welcome. My name is Michelle Vernon. I get to be the pastor here at Edinburgh First United Methodist Church, and it is my joy and my privilege to welcome you on this All Saints and All Souls Sunday as we remember and we celebrate those who have gone before and that we are not alone that we dwell among the great cloud of witnesses and that we are embraced by them always. So welcome. Um, We have a few announcements this morning. Um, First of which is on your seats, you will see these little orange slips of paper. Um, They are a means by which we celebrate how God has blessed us. As a community, we make an intentional practice that every week we write down one way in which God has blessed us this week, and we bring it forth as part of our offering. It is our sacrifice of praise. So I invite you to start thinking about how God has blessed you, what God is doing in your life, and start to write it down. Bring it forward during the offering. Every week after we have done this, they are gathered up, they are typed up, and they are posted on our webpage so that the community at large has an opportunity to see that, to experience the testimony of God's goodness, and trust for themselves that God will do good things for them as well. So that's the little orange slip of paper. On our center table, a reminder, Thanksgiving is coming, and who will be at our table, and who will we be missing? And so in this basket are little uh, craft paper place cards for you to take and write down a name of someone maybe who you miss that should be at your table, someone you would like to be at your table, who needs to be at our table, Christ's table. And we will make an intention of praying over these cards every week as we lead into um, the holiday season and Thanksgiving, but well past just a Thursday where we have turkey, but a time in which we remember Christ's table is for everyone and someone is missing and we need to pray them into the table. So I'm going to put this back here before I forget. Also... Just sort of personal pastor privilege. Um, This flyer has been on the front. Evita, Robert Vela High School is doing a production of Evita. And if you have not seen it yet, you have one last opportunity tonight at 7 p.m. at Vela High School, right? Oh, and at 2, my bad. Oh, the flyer says 7, but okay, all good. At 2, she would know she's in it. So, (laughs) Two shows today. Oh, maybe I should read them better, you think? I should pay attention to the flyer I'm holding. Um, So one showing at two, one at seven. Tickets are $10. If you're a student, it's five. So if any of you still have your old high school student IDs, pull them out. Um, (laughs) I don't know why I thought that was going to be funny, but I did. And you laughed, so thank you so much. Um, As we gather this morning... Um, If you would, if you are joining us online, we welcome you, an extra special welcome. We remind you that today is Communion Sunday, where we will be celebrating the table. So if you would like to take a moment to gather communion elements at home and have them ready, when it comes time for the consecration, I will extend the consecration and the blessing so that we celebrate communion all together, both in person and online. Um, If you are here in person, I invite you to take out your smartphone and check in on our Facebook page so that we can pass the peace with our online family. Um, More than just good morning or hello, but a blessing one to another in the name and the grace of Jesus Christ. And then if you are online, I invite you in that thread as well to begin passing the peace with our in-person community, checking in and with each other. 
And then, in-person people, after you have done that, I would like you to turn and wave, your best to float parade wave, make eye contact. Um, we do this now as a practice for our online family that they don't have to take 15 minutes to wait for us to hug, hug each other. Um, but before church, after church, come early, um, hug a neck, and bless one another. And with that, let's turn our thoughts and our affections to the Lord as we prepare our hearts for worship. Would you stand as you are able for our call to worship? We will read all together. We are gathered by your spirit, Lord, and we come to bless your holy name. For all your servants who have finished their course, now rest from you. Give us grace follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing. Good morning, church. Join us in singing Come Thou Fount.
Tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song. Some by flaming tongues above. Praise a mount I'm fixed upon it. Mount of God's unchanging love. You may be seated.
This morning's scripture reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 and 2. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we begin our time this morning, I invite you to take a brief imagely visioning trip, if you will. Consider closing your eyes maybe, or just sitting back and allowing your mind's eye to envision the scene as I describe it. The town car glides to a stop outside a stately classic mansion restaurant. The moment you pass through the doorway, you can tell this place has class, real class. You're graciously escorted to a table which affords you an exceptional view of the venue. Flickering candles provide just the right illumination. Prisms of multicolored light play off the cut crystal stemware. There's a combo playing softly in the corner. A few guests are dancing, swaying gently in time to the music. And the food and the wine, they are simply fantastic. Meat so tender it nearly melts in your mouth. Everything, everything seasoned to perfection. The dinner conversation is stimulating. You can't recall ever having had so wonderful an evening. As the night draws to a close, the maitre d' brings your bill and you're astonished as you read a single word printed on the tab, free, free. In a world where we have grown up being told that there is no such thing as a free lunch, let alone a free banquet. Today's words from Isaiah are truly countercultural. If we could put the slide back up for the verses, we'll take a look through them. Thank you. Look again at verse 1. God, through the voice of Isaiah, calls out, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And who doesn't thirst? Who can live without the life-sustaining, life-preserving fluid we call water? Our text identifies two categories of persons who are invited, and God addresses the first of these groups as verse 1 continues. Come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Here God speaks directly to those of us who are thirsty, but who cannot pay for what we need. Parched people, people dying for lack of fluids, people withering away for lack of nourishment, people with mouths as dry as dust. These people find themselves dissatisfied, unfulfilled, knowing that there has to be something more to life, but they feel so beat down by past failures and disappointments, so disheartened and disenchanted, they have nearly lost hope. Is that you? Is that me? Truth be told, I believe at times it has been many of us. For those of us who are without hope today, God lovingly invites, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. The Lord is saying to the hopeless among us, do you thirst, but you're way down on your luck? Are you broke, no money, no resources, no prestige? 
No problem. Come join the banquet. Some of us may be in this category of those without money, but I guess that for many of us, we fall into that second group of people being called. God speaks to this second bunch of people in verse 2, saying, why do you spend your money on that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? In his contemporary paraphrased version of the Bible, Eugene Peterson translates this verse with these words, why do you spend your money on junk food, your hard-earned cash on cotton candy? Group two is comprised of those people who are working hard, earning money to provide for themselves and their families. But having more doesn't necessarily mean that we are wiser consumers. How often do people find themselves spending their energy and resources to grab what they think they need rather than securing that which is truly needful. Maybe it's a different job, a new car or house, a bigger boat, a faster computer, the latest self-help book, a new spouse, or new looks. Yet after all the striving and buying, after all the dreaming and searching and experimenting, these people are still left with a haunting, disquieting sense of emptiness. How often might we find ourselves in this group? Filled with longing and need, no matter how self-sufficient we look on the outside. God concludes verse 2 with an invitation for all of us, no matter which group we identify with today. He says, Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. God entreats all of us to seek after him, to follow his word, to eat what is good and good for us. God, our loving parent, says, I have a better way. So countercultural concept number one in today's countercultural passage Oh, that's so hard to say. <laughs> Everyone is invited to God's banquet. God has no caveats. There is no exclusion clause. Everyone, regardless of race or gender or physical condition, socioeconomic group or present mental state of mind or whatever else you can think of, is invited. That's us, all of us. So what should we expect to receive? Isaiah lists three things, water, milk, and wine. First, there is water, that most basic of fluids, which preserves us from dehydration. Water, the fluid which most thoroughly quenches our thirst. But God also offers milk and milk provides nourishment. When someone is gasping for life, you slake their thirst with water. But when you want a child to grow, day after day, you give milk, you give nourishment. And finally, there is wine. And I don't think Isaiah is talking about cheap, generic wine made from the leftover grapes. I think he's speaking of well-aged wine, fine wine with a fragrant bouquet, rich and mellow on the tongue. You can almost taste it. And that's countercultural concept number two. Everyone has access to the good stuff. There is no multi-tiered caste system in God's banquet hall. There's no rule that penniless people get only water, while people flush with cash get unlimited milk and wine. On the contrary, God says everyone who thirsts can receive their fill of everything they need. 
and all are invited to drink. And we need to eat what is good and delight ourselves in rich food. What, I love this imagery, it is so beautiful. Basically, Isaiah is telling an Old Testament type of parable of what God offers to all humankind. And as with many parables, elements are representational. You think of the parable in the New Testament of the sower and the seeds. The seeds represent the word of God and the types of ground represent the groups of people to which, on which that word is falling and how they respond to it. And I believe in today's text in Isaiah, water is more than just water. When we come to God, parched and dehydrated, withering under the strains and pains of our lives, God offers us the water of faith, and God quenches our disquiet with his waters of abiding presence, regardless of our circumstances. The psalmist sang his praise to God for this refreshment with the words, he leads me beside still waters, he restores my soul. Water, that is, faith and God's graceful, loving presence in our lives save us from death. But experiencing God's provision and presence also give us a thirst, a longing for something more. We are caused to realize that we need the milk and bread of ongoing nourishment. And God does not disappoint us. God offers his word to guide us and to increase our understanding of his will for our lives. God communes with us in prayer. God strengthens us through the power of his spirit. Finally, God offers us wine. For me, the image of fine wine represents a feeling of holy bliss, a godly, euphoric peace. And please don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about a, a drunken dulling of the senses. No. I'm speaking of an acute personal oneness with God. God doesn't want us to just survive, to just get by. God wants us to thrive. And he wants to be in a deep, meaningful relationship with each of us. God wants you and God wants me to be filled to overflowing with his blessings. God wants each of us to know in our heart of hearts that we are his beloved. That brings us to countercultural concept number three. Someone, not us, paid the banquet bill, and it was paid with no expectation of anything in return. How countercultural is that? A costly gift for us with no strings attached. The someone who paid the banquet bill was God, and what a high price it was. Our place at the banquet table was secured through the suffering and death of Jesus, God's only son. God gave Jesus to die in our stead. His death and resurrection on the third day bought our admittance to the banquet hall. And his death and resurrection secured for us a place at that final, eternal, heavenly banquet table as well. In a few minutes, Pastor Michelle will extend God's invitation to us to experience a small glimpse, a foretaste of that great heavenly everlasting banquet as we celebrate Holy Communion. A place at the communion table has been set just for you and you, and you, and each of you communing 
and worshiping with us online. God's heartfelt desire is that each of us will say yes to his invitation. God desires that his whole family, all his children from all generations, be present at that glorious feast. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, giver of all good things, you call us, no, Lord, you plead with us to come to the feast you have so lovingly prepared. Father, you know how often we choose our own way rather than coming to fellowship with you. Forgive us our short-sightedness and thank you for never taking away the invitation just because we've disappointed you with our poor choices in the past. Strengthen us, Lord God. Empower us to come and dine as your guests. Come, Lord God, feast with us today. Amen. Would you stand and join me in declaring our faith together in response to God's holy and affirming word? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the Lord, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Yeah. 
We come into a time of prayer and a time of remembrance for those who have gone before, for those we miss. And we remember that we are one family, one body, one cloud joined together. And so we remember teachers and storytellers who made God's stories come alive for us and we give thanks. We remember choir members, praise bands, organists, and all the musicians who sang and played your praises, God, and we give thanks. We remember preachers and lay leaders who led our worship through the years, and we give thanks. We remember Parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, sisters and brothers who sat with us on Sundays and lived out their faith all week long, and we give thanks. We remember our church families, this one and others we have loved. We remember all those who have been a part of this faith family. We remember our ancestors in the faith, whose courage enables us to be here today, for our sisters and our brothers in the faith, whose names we remember only by God, we give thanks. And so as the people of God, we pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to the time in our worship where we honor and bless God by bringing forth our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, and our sacrifice of praise. Come, let us worship God.
Lord God, we bring you our first and our best of our time, our talent, our giving, our serving, our witness and testimony. Take these gifts, bless them, multiply them, do with them infinitely more than we could dream or imagine for the good of your kingdom and the glory of your name. In Christ Jesus we pray, amen. You may be seated. As we prepare to come to the table together to feast at God's table, there will be a place in today's liturgy for you to remember those you have loved that have gone before, and I invite you just to quietly in your space speak their names. So come. We are here because Jesus has called us, strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It is always mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table, where in the bread and the cup he meets us. And through him, we who are different are joined to each other. So come, not because you understand, but because you are understood. Come, not because of how you feel, but because God has food for you. Come not because you deserve a place, but because Jesus invites you just as you are. So come. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks to you, O oh God broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and again he gave thanks to you, O God. He gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and those gathered by your Spirit. And on these gifts of bread and cup, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all the saints, especially for those we name before you. Marilyn Dunphy, Loretta Rissica, Joanne Ryerson, Joel Gomillion, Judy Bonham, and Shorty Bishop. And I invite you to remember those in your family, in your life, in your hearts, who have gone before. The 
since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
Lord God, here at your table, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, friends and strangers, we are your beloved. You give us reason to celebrate, reason to have hope. And you gather us together. God, fill our hearts with your grace and your peace and the promise of who you say we are because you love us. In this sharing meal together, in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup, may we experience you in a way that is holy and mysterious and every day and perfect. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Would you stand as we sing our closing song? Sing with all the saints in glory, sing the resurrection song. Death and sorrow, earth's dark story to the former days belong. All around the clouds are breaking, soon the storms of sin shall cease. In God's likeness we are waking, know the everlasting peace. Life eternal have rejoice as Jesus lives who once was dead. Join we now the deathless voices. Patriarchs from the distant ages, saints are longing for their heaven. Prophets, psalmists, seers, and sages all await the glory given. Life eternal, what wonders crowd on faith, what joy unknown. When a misser's closing thunder, saints shall stand before the throne. Oh, to enter that bright portal, see that glowing firmament. Know with thee, O God immortal, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Before I offer um, the blessing, just a reminder or maybe a first time notice, Marilyn Dunphy, a longtime member and sister and saint of this community, uh, passed earlier this year and her family will be here for a celebration of life on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. and you are all invited. There is a uh, reception following immediately after and so we invite you, the family of Marilyn Dunphy invites you to be present to celebrate that fun, feisty prank Poland lady. Um, and so receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you favor. The Lord lift his face to you and give you his shalom, his peace. Amen.